Glory to God. You'll never be the same. Your mind is open. Your heart is receptive. The word of God, one word from God is able to change everything in your life. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6, turn there. We've been looking at living in the kingdom for, for a while. And once again, I wanna, want us to understand and to look at the fact that in the United States, we, we have a difficult time with the whole idea of kingdom living. Because we live in a representative republic. You notice I didn't say a democracy. Most people think we live in a democracy. We do not. Amen. Thank God. We live in a representative republic. We elect people to represent us. But that being said, we don't understand a kingdom. We don't understand a king. We don't like somebody. We vote them out. You don't vote out the king. for there to be a kingdom there must be several things present number one there must be a king number two there's got to be a territory number three there's got to be citizens there must be rule and then there are established rights and privileges in a kingdom the king Issues and tells you what the rules are. The king tells you what your rights and privileges are. Jesus is our king. And he has given us the rules, the rights, and the privileges of the kingdom. See, the Father, the Father God did not allow Jesus to come to earth in order establish a religion religion keeps the evidence of God as a theory religion keeps or, or only provides a once a week God if you're Muslim it's Friday if you're Jewish or Sabbath keepers it's Saturday if you're the majority of Christian believers, it's Sunday. But it's not meant to be a one day a week thing. We live in a kingdom, and the kingdom of God is meant to be an everyday lifestyle. The kingdom of God is, a, is, is meant to be a practical application of the influence of, influences of, of God on our daily lives. If you, if you don't have a 24-7 relationship with God, you have not entered into the kingdom. Doesn't mean you're not a Christian. Doesn't mean you've not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But you have not entered into a 24-7 relationship. You've not entered into the kingdom. Entered into your rights and privileges. Entered into what... Uh, God, uh, what we've been talking about is kingdom living. The kingdom of God is meant to be your practi uh, be practical in your mind. It's meant to be practical in your body. It's meant to be practical in your family. It's meant to be practical in your business. It's meant to be practical in the school. It's meant to be practical in all of your goings in and all of your coming out. Everywhere we go 24-7, our relationship with Christ and our kingdom living is meant to be the, the sum total of the influence on our lives. God created man in the beginning and gave him dominion over this creation that we call earth. And man committed high treason and handed that dominion, handed that lordship of the earth over to the devil. And from that day on, man has attempted, through all manner of religions, to regain that position of dominion. Jesus came. 
to reclaim the earth for the kingdom of heaven, the cross was the avenue whereby this was accomplished. In Luke chapter 4, it says, Now when it was day, he departed and went into a desert, deserted place. And the crowd sought him and came to him and tried to keep him from leaving. But he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also. Because for this purpose, I have been sent. The cross was not his purpose. The cross was the avenue whereby he accomplished his purpose. The challenge for us is how do we get into the practical application of the kingdom in our daily lives? Kingdom living means that you are under the laws of another government. The Bible calls us ambassadors for the kingdom of God. And, and as such, we have diplomatic immunity. You know, you know what that means? When, a, when an ambassador comes from another com country to this country, they can do things that in this country are illegal, but they have diplomatic immunity and our government can't touch them. Our office, police officers, they can, they can commit murder in this country. And we, we can't do anything about it. Well, we are in another country. We have a diplomatic immunity in this domain. That doesn't mean we can commit murder. But it does mean that the, 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 the things that are part and parcel of living in this earth, we're redeemed from. See, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. We, we are to interact with those who are in this world without succumbing to the influences that they deal with on a daily basis. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law. The curse of the law encompasses poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. Poverty. If you go back and, and read in the 14th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, you read the first 14 verses and you, and you see the blessing. And it's good. It's good stuff. But if you start reading in verse 15 and you read all the way to the end of, of that, you see the curse of the law. And we have been redeemed from the curse. And poverty is part of the curse. Not having enough. Living on barely get along street. Suffering through all manner of famine. All of that is part of the curse. And we've been redeemed from that. We, that no longer has sway in our lives. We've been redeemed from every manner of sickness. I believe it's verse 61 says, and any sickness that's not been mentioned yet is part of the curse. There is nothing that anyone faces in this life in the way of sickness that is meant to be part of our lives because we have been redeemed from the curse. You're in Matthew chapter 6. Let's start reading in verse 25. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to your statue? Who among us can add an inch to our statue? Now, we can add poundage, but we can't add any height. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. 
Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of abundant faith? Oh, you of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first. When? First. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So, so I want us to look at some things this morning. We're going to start out with a restoration of dominion. You know, we had a banner that hung up here for, for years. Your destiny is not deliverance. Your destiny is dominion. God has ordained that we should walk in the kingdom, we should be living in the kingdom of God, and that we should be the person or the, or the people that are operating in dominion and authority over his creation, not over one another. Unfortunately, too many men try to uh, uh, exert authority and dominion over other men, and that's not the way it works. We have authority over and dominion over the, the beast of the field. We have dominion and authority over the clouds in the sky. Pastor Betsy and I, uh, years ago, lived out on, uh, on Buena Vista. And uh, there was a series of tornadoes that came rolling through the city. And there was damage all over the place. And she went out, I was at work, I was over in Illinois, and I remember seeing the funnel clouds going, going by when I was at work. And I spoke to them, and Pastor Betsy said she spoke to them when I got home, <clears throat> she was recounting to me, and she said, I just went out on the front porch and said, in the name of Jesus, you'll not come near this house. And they didn't. We didn't have that first shingle that looked like it was loose much less anything else. There were trees down all around us, but it did not come near us. I was putting a roof on a, on a church downtown. You've heard this story before, and, and there was, we were putting a rubber roof on that had to have 24 hours for the, for the glue, the process for it to set up, uh, before it could be rained on or else it would, it would delaminate. It would, would lose its seal. And there was a, a uh, we were on the, on the roof working and uh, we could see this thunder cloud rolling in and uh, uh, we could see the rain just covering uh, uh, some, some buildings that were off in the distance. And, and I walked over to the edge of the roof. I said, in the name of Jesus, you'll not rain on this building. And the, the rain just kept rolling, and we kept working. See, see, we could have, well, it's not going to rain, but we better cover everything up. No, it's not going to rain. Let's keep working. Some of the guys said, well, we're going to cover it up? No, let's get it done. And it rolled, and, and I'm, it, if I'm lying, I'm dying, and I'm not dying. It rolled to within one block of that church. It split and went a block either side, went a block past the church and came back together. And we had a lady in the, in the church that came r riding over on her bicycle. And she said, I just knew you guys were going to be drowned like, like wet rats because it poured at my house. She lives one block away. The authority that we have in the name of Jesus, we're meant to walk in. We're meant to live in the kingdom. See, kingdom... Kingdom living gives us authority over worry. Before the, the, the kingdom of God was manifest, we were, we were all slaves. This is an add-on, but let, look at what it, what it says in uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, out of the mirror translation. No one can afford... To underestimate or be blasé 
about this final message. A salvation of such magnificent proportions. There is no alternative escape. Salvation as it is articulated in Christ is the message that God spoke from the beginning. And it was confirmed again and again by those who heard, heard him. The annotation goes on and says, We are rescued from the lies that we believed about ourselves under the law of performance. See, folks, we're not under a law of performance. Now, there are things that you do this and this will happen. We talked about that just a few minutes ago when we were talking about receiving the offering, receiving tithes. That if, that if you sow, you reap. But, but we are not under a law uh, or under the, the message of performance. We're under the message of grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. There was a, a fellow named William Nibbs who went to Jamaica uh, to be a mes- missionary back in 1824. He evangelized the slaves in Jamaica and educated slave children and taught their illiterate parents to read and established churches throughout the island for slaves. This didn't go down well with the slave owners, as you can imagine. In fact, the the magistrates forbid slaves from attending services and prohibited the building of new chapels, flogged the slaves and church leaders, and tore down their chapels. Still, see, once again, it's going back to dominion over people. Still, the slaves openly sang hymns and prayed for each other, and the number of slave conversions uh, skyrocketed uh, uh, the more the magistrates persecuted them. Imagine the effect on the soul of these now literate slaves as they read Galatians 4, 7, where Paul said, Wherefore thou art no more servants, literally no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. The same authority that Christ walked in, we're expected to walk in. The same things that Jesus did, we're expected to do. Jesus said, the things that I do, will you do also? And greater than these will I do, because I'm going to the Father. So eventually, uh, Mr. Nib sailed back to, the, uh, to England, and his testimony swept away any hesitation from England's church to support the abolition of slavery. On August 1st, 1834, slavery was finally abolished throughout the British Empire. The night before the edict was to take effect, a service with over 10,000 men and women sang praises to God until the stroke of midnight, and when they were literally freed from the bonds of slavery. From that point on, there was not a person in Jamaica who was, a, who was a slave. Unfortunately, in remote areas, there were those who did not hear the news. They continued in slavery because they were not aware of the freedom. Former slave masters kept these slaves in the dark. And free people continued to work as slaves for months. For months. For years. After They were emancipated. Unfortunately, sometimes we as believers, like those slaves in remote parts, we're free from Satan's claims. But we've listened to our former slave owners' lies, and we're still enslaved. We are rescued from the lives that we believed about ourselves under the law of performance. See, if if you're worried about many things, you're not living in the kingdom. If if we're fretful, if we, you know, it's become a joke, and and there are people that that joke about it, but it's uh, more than one person has told me, I've I've learned to watch what I say. You know, be careful. The word care, it means mental anguish, worry, distress, and and, uh, concern and anxiety. Be full of worry. Be full of distress. Be full of of anxiety. No, thank you. See, if if we're holding on to cares, we're not living in the kingdom. If if finance is is our focus, then you may be a Christian, 
but you're not living in the kingdom. If you're consumed with the cares of this world, you, you may be a Christian, but you're not living in the kingdom. Think about Mary and Martha for a second in Luke chapter 10. Now it happened as they went, he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house and, and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted by much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken from her. Mary has chosen that good part. She has chosen not to worry. She has chosen to live in the kingdom. Remember Brother Copeland telling a story about he was, at a, he was uh, holding some meetings at a church and, and uh, one, of the, one of the elderly saints in the church uh, invited them to come to the house after uh, and the pastor and his wife and and Kenneth and Gloria and some of the others that were traveling with him, uh, they went over to her house and uh, for for a meal after the service. And they they're sitting there and they're they're uh, just sitting in the living room talking. And and uh, the lady didn't get up to go fix anything. And finally, the pastor said, are, "Did we misunderstand? Are we coming here to eat?" And she said, "Yeah, we came here to eat." I don't, have a, I don't have that first ounce of food in the house. And if we're going to eat, well, we've got to believe it in. <laughs> and they all kind of looked at her like, okay. And Brother Copeland said, praise God, that sounds like something we should do. And they, they just bound themselves together and agreed. And they said, Father, we thank you. That we have more than enough to eat. And it wasn't five minutes till somebody knocked on the door and had brought them just a whole basket full of, of food to be prepared and food that was already prepared. The ram was in the thicket. See, religious people are worried about this and about that. Kingdom people live at peace worry about worrying about stuff worrying about stuff is an insult to our father jesus said the father knows that you have need of these things even before you ask paul went on to say at, a, at another place uh, with all kinds of prayer with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god See, when, when we fully comprehend kingdom living, we will fully anticipate every need met and will cultivate a continual attitude of thanksgiving. Our prayer life. Our prayer life needs to be consumed with praying for the Father's kingdom to come and His will to be done. Well, what is, what's His will? I believe part of that is we need to be those that are continually praying for a spiritual awakening to sweep through this nation. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that this, that this world is it getting worse and worse. That things are waxing worse and worse. I, I, it, and, and good is being called evil. There was a, you know about this, this thing in New Zealand this last week. And, of course, uh, uh, there are those that are already blaming President Trump for it. That it was, that it was his rhetoric that prompted this guy to, to kill 49 people in two mosques in New Zealand. But if you go and read his manifesto that he put on, online, he hated Trump. He was trying to divide the, uh, he, and this is what he said, he's trying to divide the, the U.S., get the, the liberals uh, fighting with the conservatives, 
uh, so that uh, the U.S. will fall and China will be uh, the, the top dog on, uh, on the planet. Of course, you don't hear any of that because people are not wanting to admit that. But, but the point is, we need to pray for a spiritual awakening. A spiritual awakening to sweep through this, through this nation. A, 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 a spiritual awakening to, to envelop this city. Look around, there are empty chairs in this, in this room. And my brothers and sisters, this not, ought not to be. Not that I'm all that, but Jesus is. We need to be praying for laborers to be bringing in the harvest. And quite honestly, some of you are not getting your prayers answered because you're asking for the wrong thing. James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3 says, You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Verse 3, You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. God doesn't care. He wants you to live uh, an abundant life, but the purpose of your finances should be that you have to give. Was it in Philippians where it says, let him who stole steal no more, but le rather let him work with his hands, that thing which is good that he may have to give? I told you before, Pastor Betsy and I, we quit working for a living years ago. And no, it wasn't when we started the church. It was when we realized that if I'm limiting my God to my labor, I, psh, we got a problem. But I'm limiting my God to his riches in glory. So the most important thing on the face of this earth is establishing his kingdom. Luke chapter 16 now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they derided him. They derided Jesus and said, and he said to them, you are, you are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what you highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom has been preached, and everyone is pressing into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tittle of the law to fail. Look at verse 16 again. You can't put that back up there. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it. Just leave it up there for now. There, there, there is a line of demarcation between the Old Testament message of the law and the prophets and the New Testament message of the kingdom. Jesus, think about this now, Jesus had a donkey waiting for him. He didn't own that donkey. But it was time for him to ride in to Jerusalem. And it was time for the disciples to go and get that donkey. And it was there. See, be, being about the Father's business is a key to open the lock. We're talking about keys. Being about the Father's business is the key to open the lock of worry that's held you bound. See, are you, are you looking for deliverance from bondage or are you living in the kingdom are you looking for for prosperity or are you living in the kingdom are you looking for a healing or are you living in the kingdom see you will you will never live in the kingdom if you're still waiting for some glad morning we'll fly away there is a 
This is a glad morning when we'll fly away. But that's not our focus. Our focus, Jesus said, occupy until I come. That means continue to do business, establish the kingdom here on this earth until I come and, and bring you home. See, there, there's already been a glad morning. It came upon a midnight clear. And was totally fulfilled when the stone was rolled away. Hallelujah. A glad morning that was. See, no longer do we need to grovel in this world system for a mere pittance of bread. We, we have a table that's been set before us in the presence of our enemies. And on that table is everything that you have need of. That's a banquet table in the kingdom. What do you need? It's on the table. Do you need healing? It's on the table. Do you need finances? It's on the table. What do you have need of? It's been prepared for us on the table in the presence of our enemies. What do you, do you, do you, do you need finances? The need's been met. Do you need healing? The need's been met. Do you need a friend? You have one who sticks closer than a brother. Luke chapter 12, do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He's not holding it back. If we will learn to seek the father's will and to pray for his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, then truly no weapon formed against us will prosper. The psalmist, uh, or the psalm doesn't say that there will be no weapon. It says that the weapon will not be able to accomplish its intended purpose. For in the kingdom, we are more than conquerors. For in the kingdom, we are the head and not the tail. For in the, in the kingdom, by his stripes, we were healed. For in the kingdom, we live according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. For in the kingdom... We walk in divine health. For in the kingdom, we are the conduit whereby the Father can meet the needs of others. For in the kingdom, God has given us the power to overcome death. What? That doesn't mean that we won't experience the cessation of life in this earthen vessel. But what it does mean, that even though... It is appointed unto man once to die, and uh, death cannot keep us down because it could not keep down our king. Religion guarantees you a good burial. The kingdom of God guarantees a resurrection. There's a story of a ship that was sailing from England to uh, over to New York and this trip uh, the captain of the ship brought along his wife and his eight-year-old daughter who proudly referred to him as captain during the trip she found it uh, she the ship found itself in a in a bad storm and awakened by the storm the captain's daughter uh, asked her mother what's the matter and her mother told her nervously they were in a terrible storm the little asked is Captain on deck? Yes, the mother replied. The captain is on deck, honey. The girl then laid her head on her pillow and went back to sleep. My brothers and sisters, our captain is on deck. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. See, another, another key to living in the kingdom is to let go of worry and to think on things above. We must change our thought patterns. Stop dwelling on your problems and start focusing on good, wholesome, praiseful, uplifting things. 
Think on God and his goodness and his word and his blessings on your life. Recognize our position in the kingdom as kings and priests unto our God. Jesus is the king of kings. Jesus is the Lord of lords. Last Wednesday evening, we, we started a series on the Holy Spirit. And, and at, at one point, John Bevere was talking about John's gospel where Jesus said, it's better for you if I go than if I stay. For if I go, I'll send another comforter, another one just like me. And, and he used the three pieces of fruit to explain what Jesus was saying. And he, he had two oranges and an apple. And he had a guy come up and he handed him a, an orange. And he, he, said, he said, now, there's two different words that are used in Greek for the same. One of them, he handed him the orange and then he handed him the apple. And he said, those are both fruit. So they're the same in that they're both fruit. But he said, Jesus didn't say, I'm going to send you another one like me but not the same he said i'm gonna send you another one so he took the apple back and gave him the orange the spirit of the living god is exactly the same as jesus only instead of him being located in the earthen vessel that jesus walked in he is located in you when you walk into the room jesus shows up when you walk into the room, the power of God is manifest. When you walk into the room, the kingdom is at hand. It is not near, it is here. The Spirit of God is identical to Jesus himself. And when he, the Spirit of God, is with you and in you, all the government of the kingdom is with you and in you. So no matter what the need is, living in the kingdom will provide the answer. Living in the kingdom will provide the answer. When you walk into the room, if we'll begin to recognize that the same Jesus that walked around uh, the shores of Galilee, walked throughout Israel... That same Jesus dwells on the inside of us by his spirit. Jesus himself is seated at the right hand of the Father, but he sent his spirit to dwell within us. And the same things that Jesus did when he was presenting the kingdom 2,000 years ago, we are expected to be doing today, but yet we fight over whether or not it's God's will to heal, whether it's God's will to prosper us, whether it's God's will for this or God's will for that. If we'll get into the book and find out what the kingdom entails and what we have in Christ, we won't be those needing a miracle. We'll be those providing miracles for everybody we come in contact with. Do you got anything to share? Every head bowed. The most important decision that anyone will ever make. You know, we've been talking about this before. and uh, Drunkenness won't send you to hell, folks. Smoking cigarettes won't send you to hell. The only thing that will keep a person from heaven is rejection of Christ. Now, once you accept Christ, there are some things that... that the Spirit of God will begin to deal with in your life that, that you will change, that you will desire to change. But they're not going to keep you out of heaven. Smoking cigarettes won't get, keep you out of heaven. It may get you to heaven quicker than you anticipated. But it won't keep you out. Rejection of Christ not living in the kingdom. I read Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3 a while ago. Listen to Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1. Therefore we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we've heard lest at any time we should let them slip. See folks, faith doesn't come by having heard. 
faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and and continuing to hear and listening to more and faith continues to grow. Pastor Betsy and I uh, uh, have uh, since shortly after she got saved, we bought a auto reverse tape deck. Yeah, they used to make those. And now we use an auto reverse CD player. They still make those. And we listen to the New Testament on recording all night, every night. Because your spirit, man, doesn't sleep. We wake up in the middle of the night, the word is on. Pastor Betsy's mom lived with us for several years. And the first night she was was with us, she woke up in the middle of the night and she was taken back because she didn't realize where she was and she was standing in the hallway saying anybody anybody Pastor Betsy got up and put her back to bed but the next night we put on worship music that played all night long in the background and people with dementia diagnosed with dementia traditionally are become contrarian traditionally become difficult to get along with we never had a lick of trouble from her mom she betsy'd have to go in and wake her up in the morning because she slept in such peace we established the spirit the 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 it's a word i'm looking for atmosphere in the room We need to be those that live in the kingdom. And that begins at the cross.